Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically versioning REST APIs. So this is a step number five of building REST APIs. Like I said, I will be discussing versioning. I will be covering what is Semver, a few different approaches, specifically four of them for dealing with versioning. And, and, and finally, I will share with you a few of the different things I like to cover when adding a new, when introducing a new version, when dealing while transitioning to a new version, and while deprecating the previous or the old versions. So let's start with what is SEMVER. SEMVER means semantic versioning, which is a way to indicate a concrete software version using three digits. Those digits are written as major, dot, minor, dot, patch. The idea of defining this is to indicate to their user, our customers, what version they are using and let them know when we release a new version, if the version that we are releasing is backwards compatible with the version that they are using. With that information, with those three digits, if we decide to modify the major, it indicates that the version that we are releasing or the new version that we're having is incompat incompatible, incompatible with the previous version. If we have in a new minor version, what indicates is that this is backwards compatible and it should be used by the user and it should be fine. Think of a new method or maybe a new endpoint. If we are defining a new patch, what, or rather if we are changing the patch number, it indicates that we fix a bug and literally nothing else changed. This is a way to, again, like I said, a way to indicate the users that the versions that we have available for them are either backwards compatible or not. And this is a way for them to tell them, hey, you may want to upgrade to this version or hey, maybe you should be careful when upgrading to this version or changing versions in between. Now, <clears throat> like I said, there are uh, four different approaches and that I been using and I know of that consider versioning. The first one will be using a path that literally indicates defining uh, you have your own resource already defined and in between you define a version that is a path for example the get resource for this uh, task endpoint is defining a v v1 path is defining a v2 path and all of them and the two of them may have different requests uh, requests maybe different responses maybe different query arguments or whatever and one example will be what google is doing with blogger blogger defines a resource like this that happens to be defining a suffix uh, called v2 and what this path does is indicate that this is version 2 and a similar situation happens when defining or when trying to use the v3 it's literally use the the value or the path right here right there now obviously the endpoints change and maybe the results that you're getting and the responses that you're sending or or rather the responses that you're getting and the requests that you're sending are different so that's a way to indicate that clearly differentiate that now if we were using go for example it's most likely we may be using different requests and responses and because this is using a path in the query arguments we can actually define a gateway in the in our infrastructure that sits in front of the two microservices or the two services and that one could be actually redirecting the traffic from one endpoint or to one endpoint or to another and that will keep things a little bit separated that will be kind of my suggestion if you happen if you want to use this approach the cool thing is that you can still uh, use open api for defining you know the query arguments the paths the resources the requests those kind of things and maybe you can indicate or you can indicate those separated maybe you can have a v2.swagger json and a v1.swagger json or yaml depending on what file you like or maybe you can combine the two of them so both approaches are are also applicable now another way to do this would be to define a domain this is perhaps one of those uh, approaches that is not that popular perhaps because it, it requires a little bit more of work more, more work because if you're defining a, a microservice and it happens to be this domain v1 to do dot app and v2 to do dot app then probably it's most likely you are duplicating or rewriting things in between the two of them and it's a little bit harder to maintain now this is literally they could be different microservices they could be implemented in different technologies but this is one of the approaches that doesn't seem to be that popular and not a, not a lot of uh, big companies use it. I personally haven't used this approach at all. I probably used it twice and I realized that it was not a good idea. 
like I said, because of the same reasons, because if the customers uh, are already using the V2, which happens to be using, I don't know, N number of uh, resources, they if they upgrade to V2 uh, or whatever version, they may think that all of the previous resources that were available in the previous version are going to be also available in the new one. So that could be another some sort of like a, a miscommunication between your customers or rather between your APIs and your customers. And perhaps this is not a good idea as well. Again, this is uh, because they are using two different endpoints, uh, rather two different domains. They can be independently de deployed of each other and then they can define their own resources or their own APIs if needed. Now let's go to number three which is this is one of those also really popular ones a uh, microsoft for example uses this one and uh, the way it works is that you have the resource the way it is as is for all the versions the only way to differentiate between them is by indicating a query argument and this query argument could be literally anything in the case of microsoft they use api dash version that it works sort of like this they specify the resource and you need to indicate what version you're going to be using. They have different versions, versions right here, depending on the type. <clears throat> now, similarly, you can see uh, you can define a gateway in between our different implementations, and they, that's how the traffic will be redirected, depending how it's implemented. <clears throat> and that will be my recommendation. If you don't have the option to define a gateway in front of the, in front of your services, perhaps it will be a little bit complicated because it's the, all of them are going to be using the same handle, assuming it's the same technology. But in, in both cases, uh, it is still hard to define the scheme as a request, unless you do what Microsoft is doing, which is literally build into different files for each one of the types. One of them is 2020 0801 and the other one is 2020 they are literally different different uh swagger files for representing sort of the different versions obviously but sort of the same resources and the same apis uh, another example that again is one of those really popular is using headers and in the case of headers what is happening is that we are the client is going to be sending us a header uh, value that indicates hey, this is the, the API version that I want to use. GitHub is a good example because they have a header that happens to be used a vendor prefix uh, that defines, hey, use my the vendor, which is VND, and then the type, which will be in the case of them, will be GitHub, some sort of version, and some, some sort of uh, type that happens to be like the MIME type or, or the response type or the payload type, those kind of things. They, at the moment, support only V3. And with that, they can actually, the user is sort of in control of how to interact with the same path, with the same resources for communicating with our service. Uh, in the case of our example, it would be something similar. We're going to be passing in a application vendor prefix sort of header, and then we send that to our API. Now, again, similarly, we can use a gateway because we, it, it's also in the header. So, so depending on the gateway on the cloud provider that you use, you can dis dispensify some rules for, again, pointing to different services behind the scenes, depending on the care that you are being receiving. Now, if they happen to be used the same code and you are not available, or you don't have the option to define a gateway, it could be complicated, obviously, to maintain both because most of them would be using sort of the same handler. And you may need to define some sort of like a if or switch or whatever. And again, it will be hard to define requests and schemas for those specific header-like approaches. You could take the route that Microsoft is doing and literally implement two different files for each one of them. Now, with all of that being said, what is the best option right here for dealing with versioning? And as usual, it depends. Now, it depends on... Um, how you're dealing with versioning, my, my, my recommendation will be to delay as much as you can uh, v1, which is literally don't version anything in the beginning and be as clear as possible with your customers. You should let them know that, hey, this is an API that um, is a work in progress. It may break, so please be careful. It's not really officially supported. It's an unstable API. It might not be a good idea, depending on who your customers are. If it's something that you're building internally, probably it's a little bit easier. If it's something that you're selling and they're really 
customers paying for this that it makes a little, it makes things more complicated now if you have to deal with versioning try to make your changes as additive as possible and deprecate whatever old fields are no longer used this is easier easier said, said than, than done but it's one of the approaches that a lot of companies like to take and those will be my two initial recommendations now if you happen to need to literally break your api for whatever reason let's call that the v1 was the first one and then you need to introduce a new uh, put endpoint in this case that happens to be receiving a different payload then consider a hybrid uh, approach which will be perhaps defining in the same service defining two different uh, using a path to indicate either the v1 and the v2 this doesn't mean that you're going to be sort of uh, implementing a v2 for each one of the existing v1 apis but it will be more like hey stop using v1 it is still going to work it is it still works but v2 is the recommended way it's not like you are going to literally get rid of this endpoint it will still be there in your in your service it's just the case that you're no longer using it now after all of that now that we have the two or the as n versions available and live uh, you should consider um, encourage the your users to upgrade to the new version either by indicating hey this new version has some new cool things you should upgrade or maybe providing a, a cool easy tutorial to for them to follow or or some automatic way to upgrade behind the scenes so they can still keep the old version and you tra literally have a bridge to convert from the old version to the new version and you can still have all the resources using the new api now if you are a big company you can specifically set deadlines and you can say hey but in two years i'm i'm just stopping i'm stopping i'm not going to maintain this api anymore you need to upgrade as soon as possible you can define a plan for deprecating older versions and again that's something that probably depending on who your customers are it's easier to do now versioning is 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 complicated and like i said my probably the only good tip quote unquote that can give you will be to delay v1 as much as possible and try to to be as clear as possible with your customers that the api in the beginning may be unstable or or not as concrete as, as you may think in the beginning because obviously new requirements are coming new things you're learning new things about whatever domain you're building and you you try to be you try to be as clear with them as possible so with that being said i i think there are four different approaches that we can think of we have like i said a domain a path a header and a prefix or some sort of a domain so <clears throat> uh, it depends how you how you see it if you have the option we are not covering infrastructure yet in this series but Ideally, any of these approaches could be taken if you happen to have a gateway in front. I keep saying the same, but if you happen to have a gateway in front of your infrastructure, or rather a gateway part of your infrastructure, you can literally consider the header uh, um, uh, versioning and then at the same time point to different APIs or different microservices that perhaps behind the scenes are still using the same data store, which in the end probably is what matters the most. Uh, and and only what is changing is the external APIs, which will be the requests and the responses, and probably the, the arguments that you're sending or receiving in in your um, in your APIs. So with all of that being said, I hope you I hope you found uh, you found you find this useful. And as usual, please keep it up and don't give up. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will be I will do my best to answer those in the comments. Take care.